with you. And hello again. Welcome everyone to The Great American Witch, Blood Moon Rising, episode 8. After a nice little Q&A last week where our cast uh, told some interesting things about expectations, about their own experiences with the game that will definitely not go into the GM's notebook for the big finale. <clears throat> uh, we are back with our Coven of Seer's Rest. I'm Lydia, I'm your guide, half as Charmit on the interwebs. And I, it is my absolute pleasure to see how these witches are shaping up, how the coven is being made, is being strengthened in front of all of our eyes. We're playing The Great American Witch, which is a game by Chris Gray. Check out his stuff, the link is in chat, and if you're watching on YouTube, hello there, it's down below as well. Chris is one of our sponsors this season, all of our games that we play are sponsored, and if you want to check them out, there is another link in chat just now. We're playing Great American Witch on Monday. On Tuesday, uh, we just had the finale last week of the Noadon Chronicles by uh, Broken Dice. Black Void is having their finale this week, and that one's, oof, that one's gonna be rough. That is Black Void Games, Mighty Nar Narwhal with Mora, another witch coven, but a lot more chaotic than this one on um, Thursday afternoons and, of course, right after Parslings by Smudgy Games. Game Machinery, we are going back to Defiant on Friday. They're coming back with a lovely three-parter. Spoiler. Bell's going to be in that one. And that is Friday evenings and Sunday we have Evil Hat Productions. We finished Fate of Cthulhu, but we are running through a three-parter of Tachyon, 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 I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Tachyon Squadron, GM'd by the lovely Trooper SJP once more. Uh, there's a couple of one-shots coming as well throughout our uh, off-season, mid-season break, but more on that in our Discord if you're interested. Socials, uh, the social links are in chat right now as well. We also have two affiliates. Uh, that would be Grinding Coffee, uh, if you want to get your coffee delivery straight to your door, and we have Dice dungeons for all your dice paraphernalia we know we know you're an addict we know you two are hoarding the shiny click clacks don't even try and hide it so feel free to check them out and get a discount for a penny for a tail for the penny for a tail network that is me that is our introduction but who are my players today how are they doing and who are you playing let's start with sylvie valdrianth who are you Hi everyone, I'm Val, or Valdrian, on the internet. Today I'm playing Sylvie, who um, has this weird uh, idea of reincarnation in her brain right now, but uh, she's got some some people to talk to about that. Um, but we'll we'll see how like how that goes. I, I don't suspect very well. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's me, y'all. And right underneath, uh, we have Party Web Games, Rindis. How is Marcus? How are you? Good, good. Hello. Uh, Marcus is probably still fine, uh, riding that high of traumatizing a child, uh, teenager, uh, from the last time we played. Um, but uh, otherwise would have just been working with Naneshka. So pretty good. Still oh, avoiding all of the bad stuff. Yeah, we had a little party split last time with uh, Sylvia and Anati leaving town and Aneshka and Marcus staying behind. What did Aneshka get up to and how are you doing, Alyssa? I'm doing well uh, for everyone. Yeah, my name is Alyssa on the internet. Uh, I'm playing Aneshka, uh, one of our resident Hecate witches. Uh, God, I haven't thought about what Aneshka was up to 
probably being like super paranoid about someone coming into town and trying to get shit started. But she was on her fuck around and find out attitude the entire time. Well, she did finally get rid of her big demon, so she's she's ready to conquer the world. Yeah, she's and, ready. And honors to Anathi, last but never least, D. It's the Riddler. How are you doing today? Hi. <clears throat> I'm doing well. My arm hurts. Um, I'm D, and I play Anati, and I'm very excited to see. I'm excited to see what Marcus and Ineshka were up to in their, in their time. That's what I'm excited for. And we will find out in a second if you want to help these lovely witches make it through the day. You can retweet the following link in chat. Our live tweet. If we hit. 20 we're gonna give them a little bit of a boon to make their lives easier of course then afterwards there's a bane and if we hit sub goals uh we might spring some other stuff on them or give them the good good re-rolls you can also donate for your favorite witch or for all of them or for your favorite guide if you want to um the donate link is in chat as well and 50 percent of all those donations do go to the cast uh at the end of the season we basically put them all in a big pot the donations not the cost and then we dip them up equally so feel free to support them that way and we are going to play blood moon rising what have we been up to lately oh. the town of sears rest in new mexico in the 19 70s as we write the year 1979 to be precise is a sleepy little place but while most humans don't really spend much time there maybe on their way through on route 66 of course there are lots and lots of supernatural beings who have found their their peace hopefully in this place the coven of sea's rest is overseeing people of various supernatural persuasions that are trying to find their way in life one way or another some are running from their past others are finding themselves and yet again others need to just lie low for a little bit our witches have plenty of friends human and otherwise in said town but they also have enemies the illuminati in particular are not overjoyed with having quite so many supernatural creatures and in one spot and when a werewolf skull was found and the illuminati made their move to gain it our witches have done everything in their power to prevent them from getting it because it can never be a good thing whatever the illuminati want that conflict was solved quite impressively uh i think last episode we had sylvie actually burning whatever remained of that werewolf skull after making sure the Illuminati were given a fake one and told that it was fake. Oops, we were all duped. But uh, when they realized that a truce that was established with the Illuminati chapter was hinging upon the life of Aoife, Sylvie's grandmother, who died and left this world to the next generation of witches, they realized that the skull wasn't even their biggest problem. Add to that, plenty of personal issues that came up from haunt haunting pasts for both Naneshka and Anati, or, well, haunting supernatural beings that are a little bit bigger than just your average werewolf or vampire. For Marcus, who has good chats with death himself every now and then, good chats is, well, relative. We certainly have a couple of conflicts that remain unresolved. Anati and Sylvie went to see one of the Illuminati members and eventually had to go plan for Aoife's funeral. Had to come to terms with everything that happened. What were Naneshka and Marcus up to while that happened? Naneshka, how were you spending those days after you heard of Aoife's death, other than organizing, helping, 
How did you feel? Um, it was like a cup of cold water thrown at her after her big relief. Because, um, uh, their demon wasn't the biggest thing they had to worry about. Uh, it is the Illuminati once again in their lifetime. Uh, so, I think, uh, it, while it was a short lived, uh, victory, she, um, got to work, uh, helped prepare for the funeral, whatever was needed. I assume which funerals are slightly different than just regular, uh, human funerals. Um, so any preparations that may need it, be needed from her and Marcus since they are Hecate witches. Um, but also keeping, they're taking up more uh, shifts at the Blood Moon Rising. They're keeping an eye out for any strangers that come into town. They are kind of calling up Pano and Cass and making sure they keep an eye out as well. Uh, because... It's free game now. Cass is a big help to you. Um, for some reason, he has this uncanny ability to always just be there, almost as if he can smell whenever you just are about to ask him for help. He's just there. And it's almost infuriating. But um, he's possibly after a little chat with another witch there. He's a lot better at just being there and just being support rather than actively trying to solve every single problem you will have to need or to, to lean on him a little bit given that Leia's frazzled a couple of days now she seems well she seems like she's not getting much sleep and you know that feeling yourself from very recently. She drops things, she forgets to order, she orders the wrong items. It's... She's never been that bad at her job. I think at noticing that, uh, Nanesha's gonna just, at one point, just look at her and just like a very serious look and just point to Sylvie's office for her to come into the office with Nanesha. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, is anything wrong? Come on. She starts fidgeting, kneading her fingers, as she's often want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How... What's up? And she'll lead her in and then close the door and kind of lean. Uh, she doesn't sit on the desk at Sylvie's desk, but she'll lean in front of it and just kind of look at her for a moment, analyzing her. What's up with that? Why are you so nervous? Uh, nervous? You're twitchy, you're fidgeting, you're dropping things, ordering the wrong things, forgetting things. <sighs> I need you on your just... best game right now. I've been I've been sleeping like shit, to be honest. Um Yeah, I get that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm sorry, I don't want to let you down. I know it's a tricky time. I Maybe it's... It's gonna be weird without Aifa, even if she wasn't here much, like... I... Talk to me, tell me what's on your mind. We're not just co-workers, we're friends. All right. You're trying to establish a bit of a relationship here, and for once I'm not forgetting that these conversations are not just RP. They have roles for that, because that's one of the beautiful roles things about the game. Yes! RPG. Yes! You're, that's, that's the horrible thing about you guys. You're so good at RPing that I'm just going by whatever you say rather than let the dice decide. And the lovely thing about this particular style. It's PBTA based, so we have the 2D6s, but a lot of the um, roles are conversation focused to get people to do what you want. So what's so, your intention here? Are you trying to befriend? Um, yes. Um, 
Yeah, I think at first, uh, Nanesh is that they're gonna try to befriend. Uh, so I'll roll for that. What dice am I gonna use? Nanesh is still oh. doing the good cop for now. For now. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Uh, five, seven, ten. Ten. Ooh, you tell me how she reacts. That is a full success, so you get to take over the narrative as well, if you would like. Um, I think with Naneshka, she is generally concerned uh, about uh, Leia and understands what not sleeping can do to you and having nightmares and such. Uh, and she does actually have a very understanding and caring look on her face. Um, so... Maybe that kind of breaks down her walls, and the honesty from Naneshka kind of just gets to her. She doesn't say anything for a very long time. You can see her body language closing up. You can see her folding her arms and looking away. There is something odd. You. You know Leia to not be the most self-confident girl. You know her to be a little bit paranoid, which given her backstory, given her connection to the Fey realm, what you know is that as a changeling, she's always been worried about being snatched back by some Fey creature, always being pulled into another bargain unknowingly, unwittingly. She doesn't have high self-esteem and she always fears that well, she always fears the worst, to be perfectly honest. So, feel her, you see her closing in and then not looking you in the eye, but quietly she goes, I've never had dreams like that. Like what? Come here, and she'll kind of have a motion for her to sit down. I figure Sylvie has two shares in front of her desk. And she slinks, slumps, slumps into one of the chairs, like... I... As if someone is watching me. I'm watching you. Oh. Did we just have you a little froze. stutter there, I think? Yeah. yeah. You froze through me for a second. I'm just checking that our stream is still live before I continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should be good. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Aneshka, I think I did a bad thing. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Um, what... What do you think was a bad thing? Do you remember Madeline? Sylvie's, Sylvie's cousin? Yeah. The one I body checked into a wall. <laughs> That's what? Funny. Sorry. Don't worry about that. Um, I don't know, maybe I should have told you guys, but she's a witch too, you know? Um. We know. Oh. <laughs> she's... Every now and then I see her in, in my dreams. And I see her, and I hear her, and I... <sighs> she's asking questions, and I have... To answer. I have to. I don't know. She seems so sweet. And so nice. And so well-meaning. And I... Maybe it's... That... Oh, fey part of me. I don't know. I don't... I don't want it. But... I thought she was... Trying to make... 
everything better and, and she was trying to help and now I'm not so sure anymore. Now when I dream about her she she laughs and she mocks me and then she's not her, she's you. And then she's Sylvie and then she's me. I've... What kind of questions has she asked you? Just what's... What's happening in town? And what's happening with Aoife? She said that... Sylvie didn't want her to visit. So... She wanted to hear about her... Grandmother. And she wanted to hear about... The people here and how everyone's doing and that she misses... Some of her friends when she was here as a kid. This is yeah, this is not good. Um Oh yeah. And Nanashka will kinda hold her hands between hers. It's not your fault. Has she done she anything looked else? She looks up at you, and for a second, you see yourself in her bloodshot eyes, and in her strange, half-fearful, half-angry-at-herself look. You see yourself as you were just a few weeks ago. And you seem to recognize an energy that you managed to expel. Fuck. I shouldn't have done that. I, if this, if something, I, this is all my fault. I, uh, I shouldn't have said a thing, but. Oh God, I'm so stupid, Nanishka. I'm so stupid. I, uh, I, uh. Calm down. Calm down. It's not your fault. Which, which is a very powerful and can do many things. Like you said, you felt yourself forced to talk, you said? Yeah. Maybe. You can roll me an awareness check if you want. If you want to figure out if she's lying or if she's okay. That's also or if she's that I'm emotional. Um, that's a oh, that's a ten again. Jesus, Christ. holy shit! Well, I can tell you she is not lying, but she is confused, scared. And she is holding something back. Okay. Um... Okay. Uh, Ken. Okay. Let's see. Uh... I want to get much stuff. Okay. Okay, she's gonna try her words first. Um, now that she's not angry all the time. Um, okay. Leia, you need to tell me everything if I am to know what's going on. I can help you. You know we can. We're here to help you, to protect you. A few weeks ago, she was asking about Anati. What did she and ask? I told her everything. Everything I knew. When she came here. Where she was from. What she can do. How she can make people feel.
and she's wonderful. She is. Is that all you told her? She also told me to... to go look at... Sylvie's workshop. Look for a skull of sorts. Did you do that? But I didn't find anything. And I told her that. Okay. I'm going to help you. We're going to help you. She's taking advantage of you, Leia. And we're not going to let that keep happening. On my life, I promise. Maybe I should just go. That's not how we do things here, you know that. Okay. Hey. We're a family, right? How would I run the bar without you? Well, Cass has been actually really helpful. A little too helpful. Thanks. Well, but he can't replace you. Thanks. Okay. Come on, uh, just wait here a moment. I'm gonna go get Marcus, okay? Okay. Okay. And she'll kind of, uh, when she gets up she, you know when uh, a big sister does like that head pat head rub that's basically what she's gonna do mm -hmm. uh, and she's gonna go try and find Marcus as she's going out she's gonna be like cast take over the bar <laughs> Cass is already behind the bar Looks a little bit sheepish. Y yes, I can do that. It seems you were already doing that. Well, I can't help it that I look damn good in an apron. I mean, you do, but this is... We're gonna have to talk about this at some point. The apron. That too. He flashes a smile. <laughs> I need to go yeah. find Marcus. Excuse me. <laughs> where do where does Nanishka find Marcus, Rin? Probably in his spot. It's been it's been a long set of days for them, uh, especially preparing the body for funeral and uh, pulling extra shifts. So he's probably settled in to his seat if they have some downtime to relax. Uh, so she'll go to where I'm assuming it's the a booth, the back booth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, she'll slide into uh, the opposite seat, steeple her fingers, Marcus. You have that look have about you work. again. We have more work to do. Hmm. All right. What do we have to do? It's Leia. Oh. Mm hmm. She was to... in Madeline? Was her, was the cousin's name? 
Okay. Madeline yet? Madeline. Madeline has been messing with our dear changeling. Hmm. And Nineshka will explain Leia's dreams and how she feels compelled to talk to her and tell her what's going on and what recently how she's been mocking her in her dreams and turning to different people and then calling and asking for, for her to do things. So she's been more or less getting blackmailed into compliance. We will sort of? need to deal with that. Yeah. I was thinking we could maybe form a little ritual. Absolutely. I also have a feeling that whatever was keeping me awake at night a few weeks ago is also keeping her awake at night a few weeks ago. I mean, it's also keeping her awake at night now. Right. Let's let's see what we can do for her. See if we can ward off some of these bad dreams. And yes. we'll make a note to kidney shot uh, dear cousin when we see her for this. I'm about to do more than body slam her against a fucking wall, I swear to god. <sighs> so itching so, for that. Yeah. Her, her violence is still there. It's just more controlled violence now. It's not erratic. It's like a controlled burn now. Um... Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I was thinking was doing a blessing of the mother, which reveals the best path for the subject so that they find personal happiness and success and that will use the best of their potential to kind of like try to figure out how to get Leia out of this little web that Madeline has her in. Um... Yeah, roll me that spell. I think you can you can set up the ritual at some point in between the preparations, um, in between everything. The it's a mother spell. Blessing plus mercy. Yeah. Do we both roll again? I feel like it's been like such a long time since I played this game, and it really has. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been so long since we rolled dice for sure. <laughs> yeah, we had we had some strong non dice rolling episodes. Um, let's see if we have. Let's see when you want to guide others. Protect. I'll say Marcus, if you want to roll me and navigate others plus wisdom. And we'll treat that as wheel or woe, depending on what you roll. Right. If you Plus fail, wisdom. it's... Yeah. And navigate others, roll. Alright, so I got a 2 and a 3, and my wisdom is plus 0. So, uh, it's a big old 3. Oof. All right. Do you want to do it narratively, as in how, why you're not super on board with it, or why you're not, why it's not working out? If not, we'll just treat it as a, as the demon I, I think kind he, of. I think he, yeah, I think he is super on board with it, and he's giving it a real try because this is something serious, and I think it just doesn't work. I don't. I don't think it's not so much that he he isn't into it or anything because he is. It's just a failure. Uh, some bad magic on his part. You'll... Yeah, yeah I mean, he, could do, you... he could just be tired from work. You find yourself kind of crashing against the wall with a voice going... Do you think you can do that again? You underestimate me. This one is right.
Nanishka, do you still want to try it? Or do you want to subdue that conflict until a later time? And now she's trying it. Does she also hear the voice or is it just Marcus? Marcus will will tell you, yeah, you can you can both hear the voice, I guess. Yeah, he's not keeping that to himself <laughs> considering the way things are going lately. Oh, we're banishing this bitch again. We're doing this. Let's do it. All right. What? Uh, hmm. This will be... A blessing spell is plus mercy, but I, are you going into this with mercy in your aspect? Um, I feel like originally she did because she is helping Leia. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think... Even though I feel like the demon would cause severity, she's still doing this not out of spite for the demon, but to relieve Leia of what she has experienced, of whatever is going on with her. So All right. I think the voice just kind of fuels her fire to like achieve what she's trying to do, but not like just be spiteful and and go into crone or severity. I think that makes sense. Um, so roll me a straight roll, you're not at woe. Not at wheel either, but not at woe. I'm using these dice for the rest of the session. Uh, is it plus... Do I get a plus one to, wis to wisdom? Yes. Wait, am I going... Well, no, okay. this is in wisdom. This is a mother. Blessing is plus mercy. You're going oh, in... Mercy, you said no, you're just it's a straight roll in this case. Okay. Double fives. That's still yeah. really bloody cool, and I'm not salty about it at all. Tell me how this plays out. Um I feel like noticing the uh kind of wall that Marcus keeps hitting. Uh, she's gonna kind of take charge in this and just have him help set up a ritual uh, and kind of watch over uh, as that extra security. Um, and she's going to lay uh, for them. It's uh, They usually do a, a circle. It's kind of a sort of protection from the outside. Um, and Leia's gonna be there with her, but She's not sitting in front of Leia, she's sitting behind, and her hands are beside her head, like, touching her temple, and she's casting this magic that kind of swirls around them both, almost like a snake. Um, and she already knows uh, this pit of despair that this demon is, knows the stain, basically, so they know what to look for. So they're trying to look for that, and before this seed can keep blooming, kind of rip it out of the ground uh, that is Leia and try and figure out if this is the only thing that's compelling her to um, work with Madeline or what else mm -hmm. is in there if there's any type of other magic lingering from another witch With a 10 you have an ultimate success and you're bite your absolute dedication to this, plus just the fact that you finally, not for the first time, but you're getting the hang of channeling your anger into something just creative and productive rather than destructive. And you find your way not just into the demon's mind, forcing him out yet again. You find your way into Leia's mind. You're a little bit taken aback at first, but you do feel almost like a web of lies, compels, and sweet half-truths that made her, forced her into trusting Madeline. You can recognize this magic. 
it is hag magic. It is similar to what Sylvie sometimes does. It's similar to how Reeves gets his way in the bar with every customer. It is fey magic. And you realize, you clock it, of course. Leia is a fey being. At least partly so. Sylvie has, to a degree, control over fey beings. It does make sense that Madeline would be able to compel her. To tell her things. That, with some smart lawyer talk, basically. You start to undo the knots and the strings of the spider web. I think the visual would be, because I already had the visual of the snake uh, wrapping around all magic-like, it'll be almost, for the demon, it'll be a snake striking and ripping a seed from the ground. And the same snake, it's this almost iridescent snake. You know the black snakes you can see that have like this rainbow sheen on top that slithers into Leia's mind, but it's not insidious it's careful and at the um visual of this spider web it turns because fire has been such a motif with Nineshka this magic snake kind of turns into a snake made out of fire and wraps around the webs burning them away and I feel like I Marcus like can see almost like a, a flame uh, as she touches uh, Leia's head, but it's not burning them. The ritual concludes successfully, so not with a demon cast out, but with a demon extinguished. You can't, neither of you can feel its presence. And Leia falls over unconscious or asleep, it's hard to tell where she exactly where she exactly falls right now, but what you've learned definitely gives you pause for thought. How much does Madeline know? Even with Leia now severed from her influence. You need to talk to Sylvie, to Anati. You need to figure out what this could mean. And you still need to organize the funeral. So I'm bringing you all back together. The funeral is happening soon. Anati and Sylvie you did have your episode two weeks ago with various personal interactions with various personal developments that unfolded, let's put it that way. How would you like to approach this scene or is there anything you two would like to, to still wrap up? from last time before we continue as the coven. I don't believe so. I think Anati is wrapped up as she can be right now. Then you meet up in the Bad Moon Rising bar. Just a couple of hours before the funeral really starts. You exchange information about Leia. You tell each other as much as you want to tell each other. Is there anything you want to hold back from your various individual scenes, or can we all assume we're on the same page? Hmm. No. What's uh? What are we telling? What are we telling Sophie about Leia? <laughs> Anishka, Anishka is going to be open. She's going to tell her. Mm -hmm what happened, and she's going to tell her that if she sees Madeline again, she's going to stab her in the throat. Yeah, there's, there's very much the, the your cousin's on uh, not on thin ice, she is completely submerged in the ice water, and the uh, yeah. hole is quickly <laughs> She has fallen, over. and the ice has already frozen over. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Not so that begs the question. Also communicate. That begs the question. Does Leia now is Leia now a risk to the Coven? She's no longer under she my wings. She deserve our protection as a traitor. It was not her fault, Sylvie. Madeline's the same type of witch that you are. She has control over fey beings to a certain extent, and Leia, however little, is a fey being. She was compelled to do these things. It's not largely actually beyond her control. And she trusted in us enough to confide that and seek help rather than hide it. Marcus and I already got rid of her influence over Leia. What was the influence? Her magic. I don't know how she's going to, if she's going to do it again, but I gave Leia a few days off to stay home. But it is not Leia's fault. She does not deserve to be punished for that. Um, I would like to summon uh, some of the Fae that I tend to commune with often here. All right. What would you like to do? Yeah, probably some of the ones that I usually have look over my like workshop from last time, like the snake. Um, I want to summon kind of I would like to summon my snake friend because I want eyes on Leia's dwellings. Is that a particular spell you're using, or is it um, just a general? I can actually do find and request the presence of a spirit or fairy so that you can converse with them. Um, mm -hmm. And a fairy, or that's the divination, and the other one is a fairy or spirit will be a subject's benefactor, protecting them from harm, inspiring them, bringing them. I think uh, I definitely want to do like the divination one. From it's a maiden spell. Mm -hmm. That's mostly just a chat. That's if you want to, yeah, get yeah. information. See special player drawn with the two interactive features of player physical present. Communication of spirits of this individual being with tricks. Yeah, I, I guess I just kind of want to. I'm just reading. Sorry, I'm blind and I have a hard time reading things on screens. If you want to talk to them and ask them to help. Then we can do a regular yeah. roll. We can do a. Okay. I think enforce your will or rally. Uh, we'll go ahead and go with rally. Let's see. Enforce your will is what? The severity and rally is mercy. Uh. I'll go ahead and go with Rally. I don't get any blessings to Mercy, but, um, you know. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. It's a straight up five. So I'm assuming That's a fail. it's not. Yeah. That's. You summon your snake, and the snake is a little bit. Mm, uh, a little bit frustrated is almost what you're feeling. It's, mm -hmm. it's a sens sensation of nothing ever happens. You always summon me to, to watch things. I never get to do anything. It's almost like a little temper tantrum of a child. Mm -hmm. Which you are aware of. The Fae are sometimes like, when they're just bored, they get really hard to work with. So, the snake... what you're saying 
is that next time I bring you into my presence, it should be a little bit more action-oriented. Next time you bring me into your presence, I will make it so. Good to know. And the snake disappears. You feel a general plunge almost in fairy presence mm. in Seer's rest. Mm. Almost as if many of the creatures you've summoned lately to do errands and to oversee things, to keep an eye out, have gone with it. Gotcha. <sighs> Fail we'll usually has with... some unintended consequences, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. We'll have to deal with that later. There are ideas I wish to bring to everyone here concerning the truce or the lack thereof one that now exists. I would like to talk with the members that are here, the members of the Seven that are here, if they have the original contract. Because I have an idea. What's the idea? An idea that'll keep the truce going, if possible. Okay. I need to know the specifics of what my grandmother's has to be alive. Is it alive, mind, body, and soul? Or does a rebirth count as part of that truth? And I gotta look over at Marcus because, you know. Yeah, this he, might he's also kind of considering yeah. that, like, hmm, loopholes. I like loopholes. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think they might have put in, uh, try to get rid of loopholes that have to do with maybe putting a soul back in a body since that's something me and Marcus could technically do, but rebirth is I'm different. Not there is a stipulation for the returning the spirit, and the main problem is that, as Naneshka said, the body has to be habitable, but it also has to be free of decay and disease, and yeah. it does include right. the mental. I'm not talking about putting the soul in the old body. No, we're talking about a full rebirth. Reincarnation, yes. Well, I guess that begs the question does the contract end on death or the stoppage of life? Because if it ends on death, then even if she does get reborn, she still died. Exactly. Which is why I need to see the contract. Yeah. It's the only way to be sure. Then, let's go to the funeral and then mingle with the witches that are here. See if anybody has a copy of it. So this is before the funeral? I thought this was after. The conversation just here is just before the funeral. Um, oh, okay. So you're, mm -hmm. you'll be able to talk to the two representatives of the Seven. In the wake yeah, after the we've had the f time. exactly we've had hints of how the funeral goes uh, last time so i just wanted to make sure everyone was still up to speed and everyone was actually here for the plan instead of going for the plan when the neshka and marcus would maybe go against it as as hecate witches because you know morals but apparently that's not a problem in this group 
<laughs> so uh, I think, we're uh, Neshka real quick will mm -hmm. end the conversation with Sylvie mm -hmm. if your cousin ever shows her fucking face here or anywhere near us again I'll fucking turn her into a zombie I swear to god I'll help good cause Neshka can do that <laughs> <laughs> GM looks at her notes goes okay <laughs> um, <laughs> the funeral itself has various rites that you have prepared, that other witches have prepared, and various beautiful eulogies, but it's still a funeral, and it doesn't last very long because nobody likes a funeral. That being said, Aether, being of Irish descent, has always made sure to let her friends and colleagues know that this is definitely something she would want for her own funeral. A proper wake. A proper send-off that includes plenty of spirits and not the ones you are all used to. Not for nothing uh, you ordered a good amount of whiskey, a good amount of extra booze, knowing what was going to happen, and as the day and afternoon progresses. The extra benches and tables you've put out in front of the Batman Rising are filled with lots and lots of stories. Lots and lots of drinking, songs, and even laughter at some point as people remember Aether's life and people remember what she was like in her youth and what she was like in during motherhood and what she was like as a grand witch of Seer's Rest and a Grand Witch who could have easily become one of the seven but chose not to. Isabel McKenzie, one of the representatives, the hag representative of the seven, has plenty of old war stories. Um, every now and then a bit of a a bit of a remark that you would probably know would would, would have Aether herself object but uh, even though the two witches had different opinions, they, they've been through a lot together. Um, likewise, you find that Pablo, a witch of uh, Hecate, who actually used to stay in Sia's Rest for quite a long time, has many more wistful, more emotional stories to tell about their relationship and their friendship. And they stayed in contact until the very end. They kept writing letters. Um, he even mentions Pino a couple of times in some of her stories. Mentions other people, Cass. You start getting a feeling for who these two are, not just as grand names so far away from a small coven like this, but you start to see the connections, and you start to see just how well known the Coven of Sea's Rest actually is, or was. How you, would you like to approach them together, or would you like to approach them differently? What are you going to do? God, Anati so does not want to talk to these people. If if the rest of the coven would like her to be present, she will. But Anati's nerves are already like <laughs> bad enough. She doesn't want to talk to two of members of the seven. She no. I think we should all be there as a unified front. <laughs> but not all of us need to talk. <laughs> And Sylvie seems to be good at talking. <laughs> We're there for emotions. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> you got this. It's not that she's good at talking. Sylvie is just good at not budging. <laughs> like... yeah. Sylvie is really, really valid. <laughs> yeah. Nazi can stay silent if she wants to. Marcus, how, how hard has Marcus been hitting the whiskey? Oh... He's probably not sloshed, but, you know, he's socially drinking. Yeah, okay. Um, 
He could he could talk I, if nobody else wants yeah. to. We could we could pass around the talking baton. Uh but uh Sylvie can I think Sylvie can kind of start with what she wants or needs uh from the people here because we do I think a good thing would be to let them know that even though Aetha's gone and the coven is moving into new hands, it's still in good hands and we're gonna do whatever we can to protect our coven it's and our It's been people. in our yeah, it's been in our yeah. hands for a while. Um yeah. since we did the ritual to take her magic from her. But yeah. um yeah, I will I I will lead you whoever wants to come with me to where the seven are staying um and um i will have a round of murphy's for the deer seven uh for those of you who don't know murphy's is, is a beer <laughs> um, from that side of the that corner of the world that my granny's from so uh that was not an irish accent that was mine um anati so, will, and I will just like mm -hmm shuffle behind Nineshka like periodically wave and do courteous things Nineshka will hold a Nazi's hand for comfort well, if she needs I will yeah I will go ahead and sit down with with these uh with these members and hello thank you for your attendance it meant a lot. We wouldn't we wouldn't have wanted to miss it. You she deserves a celebration. Way. That's Isabel. Isabel. She deserves a celebration. I agree. Unfortunately, I don't know how long a celebration of her life will continue. Do you happen to have access to the contract that my grandmother had with the Illuminati? Isabel and Pablo exchange a look. The incident. I'm more interested in the terms of the incident. We should have a con copy of it somewhere. Why? I will I will need it to look at its terms. The animosities were dealt with. The animosities were they not? Come back. I'm sorry, what was that, Lydia? The animosities were dealt with, were they not? And Manushka said the animosities will come back. You see Pablo and Isabel exchanging a look that is worried. Slightly exasperated. There is a possibility that, more than a possibility, we were informed by one of the Illuminati members that was related to Aoife and I, that the terms of that animosity, of that truce, are supposed to end upon her death. However, knowing Aetha, and how quick and how witty she was, I need to look at those terms to see if there are loopholes that I can exploit. Because I am here to protect the legacy of this town, and I will do whatever it takes. Not to bring dishonor on your grandmother, but when it comes to loopholes and letter of the law rather than spirit of the law, it is hard to get one over the Illuminati. She still like makes. To see. She makes a couple of, of hand motions, and you see a an owl appear, um, mm -hmm. seemingly conversing with Isabel, and then dissipating into thin air. 
Give it a minute. This is not what I expected from tonight. If the truce is in danger, then... <sighs> this might turn into an all-out war. Exactly. Which is why I wish to avoid it. If it does turn into an all-out war... Are you people we can count on? Being of the Seven means... We are tied to the decision of the Seven. We are but two. And Pablo chimes in with... A war. Can't, but we can't afford that. We, this is this is the same bullshit all over again. And he gets worked up. He has had a couple of of pints of Murphy, of maybe some whiskey as well. He knocks on the table at some point. We barely made it out last time. We barely kept the town alive last time. This truce. That's the best thing we could have hoped for after all the sacrifices. After all the people we lost to this stupid idea. We don't want it to come to that again. But they've been waiting. Scheming. And trying to infiltrate Are you the town. Are you telling them what you know and who the actors are? Not yet. I right. think it'll depend on like the mood of my coven and the questions they ask. But she will let them know it's like they've been waiting and scheming and trying to infiltrate the town. Um, Sylvie will straight up say that Madeline visited AFE in the nursing home in the hospice care. Mm-hmm tries to play it off as sincere. Madeline, huh? Mm -hmm. As far as she's we know, she's working... Involved. She's been working her way up. Still not... forgetting her own powers and her own traditions. She's fucking traitors that she is. Well... Your thoughts, you're definitely free to think whatever you like. I might agree. Inofficially, of course. Of course. There's been several struggles with the Illuminati throughout the land. Throughout the nation. They might be looking for a reason to escalate. The end of a truce is an easy reason. Do they have a reason to escalate? Do they have anything on you they could use? Not that I know of, but they've been trying. They... Like I said, they've been trying to infiltrate the town. Um, wow. Go ahead. Like, as you're talking and that question is asked, I'm gonna look over at a naughty. Um. I'm not exactly sure why, but the Illuminati does have a vested interest in. in You. Yeah. They usually only have interests in things or people they can exploit, they can use. 
Do you know what use you could be to them? Not in particular. I, the memory's a little hazy, but I think that they had me at one point in one of their facilities up near Rossford, Ohio. And I, uh, I, I can't remember much from that time. Ohio. That's... Yeah. As far as we know, there's an... An agricultural company they're running. Hmm. Seeds, that stuff. Indoor growth towers, um... <sighs> Genetically... Changed and that would, as they would put that it, would be why. improved materials. I've always had a aren't seeds. Well, I have always had a particular gift with plants, bloom flowers. Tending gardens. I would guess that uh, that's probably what they want me for. Well, we can't let them have you then. I mean, there is. Is it worth a whole? War. We don't sacrifice our own. That's not how we do things. Not at all. There is no choice we can force you to make. That is also not how we do things. But no, I would recommend against such a noble deed. It's possible that they might have broken the truth before it ended. Possible. That they're good at covering their tracks. If we can... somehow... forge a new truce, that is an option we need to explore, but... It will give them the upper hand in negotiations. What would happen if they had broken the truth before it ended? We'd have to bring it to our colleagues, but... It would be a lot easier to unite the various covens and the various experts of the crafts against them. Alright. You might want to double check certain people. Those are very inclined. Madeline has been using her own gifts against us and has been influencing one of our own that we've protected in this town. Trying to get information. And succeeding. Interesting. That could be considered as overstepping. We will bring it to the seven. An official discussion, looking into the contract, looking into the terms, and looking into the potential breach of said contract from both sides, just for clarity's sake, 
We'll have to be thorough. We're not natural lawyers, Isabel says with a smirk. They are. Even the fae, the devils, the demons of this world can sometimes learn from the Illuminati. It's as if they have combined the worst traits of fairy and hell and have turned it into a business. You see contempt oozing with every word. I wouldn't put it past them. They're filled with people who would betray their own kind for nothing. Are you going to ask something specific or propose something specific because otherwise I'll have the scene come to an end and they will leave the wake a little well, bit I'm earlier than they had the, planned. I'm just, yeah, I'm just waiting for the contract to appear. Alright. The contract yeah. does appear in the end. Um, the contract is legalese to the point where you your eyes go cross-eyed as you're trying to read it all. But it is tied nice to Aphas. Oh, okay. What are you? I would like to, spin to do the, the charm. charm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would like for it to specifically word that it is tied to Aphas' life cycle, and those are the cycles, and that is the word wording. Am I ruining it? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just considering. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How to best turn that into. Yeah. Yeah. There's an almost smirk on Sylvie's face as she. Because uh, she's a scientist, so, you know, mm -hmm. jargon is not. doesn't intimidate her much. Um. Even even legal jargon, because um, you know you have to prepare patents and shit like that, research papers, that kind of stuff. It's always mm -hmm. it's always yeah. She's not if she is unsettled. It it definitely ends when she sees the part of Apha's terms because her grandmother was very, very smart. She got it, honestly. Alright, you spend that charm, and the wording is specifically tied to Aoife as a person, yes? Mm -hmm. And you get a sensation that this was one of the negotiation points, that perhaps it was originally tied to Seer's Rest, and that Aoife used her her own wit to have it tied to her, insinuating that it... Almost playing stupid, playing dumb with mm -hmm. it, tying it to her with the mm -hmm. Illuminati, thinking, oh yeah, this is how we're gonna get it. But then wording, um, you say life cycles. Mm -hmm. What are you, how are you um, putting the lore of that into play? I am considering reincarnation like Aipha considered reincarnation as well. Alright. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's go with that. Are you telling the two of your plans? Um, yeah, she will put her... She'll put the, um, the contract down and sort of set it out. And look over at the at Pablo and Isabella. The truth, the truce, seems to be tied to Ava's life cycles. I may have access to continue her cycle of life. That 
while smart, could be considered an ethical dilemma by some of our kind. I consider the wording in this contract's AFS consent. If that is what you're worried about. I wouldn't put it past Afa to to smile upon this particular plan. Isabel seems a little bit pained, considering that I find it in no offense quite bad taste. That is reason enough for me to assume that she would love it. That being said, while I knew Afa, others did not, and might see this move as a selfish, if not megalomaniac undertaking. Would you... What is less ethical? War? Or reverse? That is something we will decide. If and inform you I, of. If I may interject. Should this leave a bad taste in people's mouth? This would actually give us more time to try and rework a new contract with them. I don't you want to use suggest it? that we <laughs> rebirth Aifa every time she dies. And I would like to secure a safe truce for people after we all die. Pablo looks at you with a very thoughtful glint in his eyes. You remember the laws of our craft, young witch. Life or life. Resurrection must be balanced by sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice for such resurrection? Not a life taken before its time. Not a spirit forced out of its body, but gone by natural means. I would give a lot to protect this town. And if a balance must be kept, then it must be kept. But... The truth... is done. Aifa is dead. Her life cycle currently is over. And right now we're free game to the Illuminati. We could strike at any moment. They've been scheming for years for this. We have not. So, we either find a way to continue this truth in a matter of hours or day, or try to figure out how to bring Ava back at a cost. At a cost. We will debate and inform you of where the seven stand. Take it as counsel, not law. Do as thou wilt, but be prepared to suffer the consequences. I wish you luck. For what it's worth, I wish you luck. And Pablo stands up and leaves the table. Isabel sits there a little bit longer and seems deep in thought. 
It's a clever move. Afa would be proud. She nods at Sylvie. I know. And then leaves the table as well. And they disappear through a portal that Isabel almost paints into thin air. They wouldn't display it quite so openly if it weren't serious, you all know that. Mm -hmm. Now you, as you're looking at each other, sitting on that table while the wake around you seems to continue without having really noticed what was going on and all the various bits and pieces that have been whirring in your head, all the little gears turning, we are going to take a brief break because my dog is going slightly mental behind me and we'll be back in 10 minutes so you can discuss further, see what we're actually going to do and see if um, someone else might be trying to pay a visit to this particular I will turn her into a zombie. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with That's zombie turn. That's gonna be the life. That's gonna be the sacrifice. <laughs> let's let's do it. Let's get her. <laughs> oh god.
and we are back with Bloodmoon Rising and with a coven that is uh, contemplating crimes against life itself. I'm not judgy, you're judgy. Um, <laughs> contemplating is different than doing. Don't yes. Ask why. Um, ask why not. That's... <laughs> that's the coven of Maleficar Seer's Rest. But I'm okay with that. We're going dark. So we just had a little conversation with some of the seven. Sylvie offering her ideas. Naneshka being right or die. Anati and Marcus a little bit slightly more subdued, I would say, in, in their opinions. You're left on your own at the table, a little bit secluded. Are you wanting to talk this through? Are you wanting to proceed? What are we doing? I I would like to talk this through. Uh, I think Nanushka, like after we all finish with the wake and things are settled, kind of like will open Bad Moon Rising just to the coven. Um, and she'll. I think out of habit they'll get behind the bar, but just kind of like put their hands on it and just lean on it and their fingers are tapping. Mm -hmm. We gotta be prepared for a lot of things, not just war. Yes. I don't think they'll... It's possible that war is not their end game. They also lost a lot of people. We need to know what they're planning. Yes, and all things considered, though, it seems like it's the direction they are leaning, allying with the werewolves and reinforcing that old bond, and now making sure that this pact is broken. It's not much in the direction of the contrary. Well... True. But then again, lawyers are sneaky. How much I know. So we need to figure out all... If not all, at least what other options they would be willing to do. The obvious is war, yes. Wiping out a lot of us and also few of the ranks in the way. What but, did Layla tell you that they knew about us? Ouch. Um, Le Leia said that Madeline asked about people in the town and about mm -hmm. Nazi specifically. And I don't doubt she was trying to look for a reason to escalate things by having her go into your workshop and try to look for a skull. Try to see if you actually duped her. They're not gonna find anything. There's nothing left. Yeah, Leia told me she found nothing. So that's good. Mm, I'm gonna have to lock my shop now. Yes. Is there some sort of way, you think, that we could manipulate Madeline like she manipulated Leia? I don't know Madeline's full capabilities quite yet. They are similar to mine. We are from the Seer Draw. We're from the same heritage. Um... I don't know if we can manipulate her. I also know that Greaves visits her. He is, after all, a neutral being that looks after the bloodline, and she is still a part of the bloodline. So, however, Reeves is not one to... He may cause mischief, but mischief between the bloodline I don't think is his goal. 
I'm Should not worried you. about Reeves. I'm worried what she's going to do with the information she knows. She knows the people here. She knows what we have. We don't know anything about the ranks. Other than that, this sex sector's leader is a werewolf. She, she doesn't know witch. everything. I mean, hypothetically, she only knows what Leia knows, right? I mean, Leia yeah, was... So we spoke a lot around Leia. I suppose. Out of character, to refresh my mind, Leia was not with us during our heart-to-heart, -heart, though, right? Like, she was very specifically casted away, right? During that I'm episode, fairly certain there was no which heart to heart bar. Um, the one before AFE died, like when we were all like playing that game together. Yeah. No, you were alone for that. It's Good. hard for you to really because you'd never really considered her, and she is a fly on the wall just by nature. Mm -hmm. It's hard to really pinpoint what she knows and what she doesn't. Right. And well, hard we to tell could... what she managed to find out on her own and what she didn't, because he never had reason to suspect her. What were you saying, Jesus? We could, we could try and come at Madeline from the angle of her interference through Leia broke the contract in some form. I guess we don't know if she's seen the contract herself, but. We could try that as an angle of like, yes, this technically I mean, would... broke the contract, but scratch my back and I'll scratch yours kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, they would have a copy of it. And that's what I was trying to point to Isabel. She said it might be a breach of contract, but they will look into it. I'd also into if we ever breached the contract ourselves. I don't know if body checking her into a wall was breaching the contract. Yeah, it's more of a like person interpersonal thing. That that would make sense. I sure hope so. I mean, technically breaching contract at the same time they were breaching, so it might be a double negative that cancels each other out. That's true. The phone rings. The bar phone. Yes. Maneshka will pick it up. She won't say anything, just pick it up. So you noticed, huh? It is Madeline's voice. Hard not to notice your stink. We should talk. Well, I do. What do you need more information out of us? I needed the information because I was sure I wasn't gonna get it from you guys. And even though I'm sure you are not going to believe me when I say the following, I'll say it anyway. I needed the information to draw up a new truce. Beneficial to both parties. As far as I can make it so. I do not wish to see my family annihilated. So I guess there is a line for you as a traitor, huh? I appreciate your attempt to get me angry. Oh, I'm not trying to get you angry. I'm just trying to put the truth in your face. Will you have me for negotiations? Or will you resort to violence as is your want? Well, you see, Madeline, some of us actually grow up and change our ways. Mm. 
Oh, I've grown up and changed my ways. Don't lecture me Please on that hold. little girl. <laughs> She'll put her on hold as she's speaking. <laughs> I can be fucking petty. Don't try me. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Nineshka is really. I'm glad Nineshka is really keeping the tension low in this phone call. She just <laughs> makes sure that everything is going along peaceful. No, no trouble whatsoever. It's just that moment where she's like, "Did this bitch put me on hold?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just rock and roll music starts blasting. Imagine. Oh, oh no! Imagine Madeline on the other side. Do 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 do. As the girl of Ipanema, like, uh, Ipanema is playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as she puts Madeline on hold, she'll turn to the group and explain. It's Madeline. She's trying to justify her actions, saying that she's trying to drop a new contract that is beneficial. Well, as beneficial as she can do it for both parties. She wants to meet with us. Meet with us with whom me. else present? Haven't asked that yet. If she intends to... <clears throat> that's not how Anadi talks. If she means to meet with all of us and it's just her, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, one versus four. Don't I wouldn't underestimate her. Mm -mm. Mm. I not only do I not underestimate her, I do not trust her. And oh no, I don't trust her. I, as far know... as I, can throw her. I can throw her pretty fucking far. You are quite strong. Um, I. Unfortunately, I do not think that we can necessarily wait for the go-ahead from the Seven with the possible reincarnation plan or negotiation meeting. And I think that distracting Madeline is a good idea, making her believe that we are open to a new contract, even because she probably saw the wording herself and she probably understands. <sighs> However, we do have a secret in this desert. We do. Well, depends where we meet her and if she's coming alone. I'll go check on that. I'm sure she's enjoying the whole music. Mm -hmm. She'll pick up the phone. Is it just you or is it anybody else? Just me and a lot of paperwork. Joy. Let me get the Batman Rising. Just you. And you're only welcome until we say you are. Understood. Then hurry up and bring your paperwork over. Tomorrow. Any other concerns, questions, comments, ratings? I'll leave for feedback form. Wonderful customer service. Five stars would do again. And she hangs up the phone. <laughs> Nanishka hangs up. All right. I fucking hate that bitch. The. I will say the um, tomorrow because it's probably late at night. You said I, uh, the the bar was being cleaned and it was basically locked down. Just you guys. She will have specified that she'll basically be here in the morning before customers are coming. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not tomorrow. You don't have ages to to prepare shit it's unless like you want to do hours. a quick warding spell. 
it's basically in a in a few hours yeah. yeah um and i will remind you that it is at this point the day before the blood moon mm -hmm. okay uh i will suggest that we do a quick warding spell as a coven yeah um the other, like after we do the warding spell, uh, Sylvie has things to has an idea on how to approach this whole thing. But let's go ahead and get our warding spell up. Coven, mm -hmm. coven spells. Have we coven we haven't done spells. one yet? No, I think we did one at the beginning. We did one to protect Jake, but that was it. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spell. Early magic. On. Yeah. Now, what kind of spell would you like to cast upon the area? Ooh. And you will only have time to really protect the Batman Rising bar. The longer something takes, mm -hmm. the longer a ritual yeah. takes, the more powerful it is. If you want to use these hours, uh, you can do so, but it will only affect the bar. Where are my coven magic things? Now I have Girlfriend Yuka Mima stuck in my head. <laughs> Same! Another community or city, the Witch's Curse will succumb to disaster the next week. Um... I'm looking, I think these are the spells if I'm not, okay. Yeah. Covens of Divine Magic, Coven of the Veil, Coven of the Town. The Mercy one is the participating witch's home community will have an immense wealth of prosperity in the next year, or I think the wisdom is what we're looking for. In that the participating yeah, yeah. witch's home community will recover from a disaster within the next lunar month. So if a disaster happens here, we have like our magic will help it recover so whether it's from madeline herself or for the bad moon rising or whatever it will the, only the cover bad moon rising. yeah yeah right yeah, now it, it will, will only cover the but... bad moon rising and it will um still require you all to roll but i will say if you want to after madeline deepen the spell you can set the groundwork mm -hmm. to build upon the magic you start weaving. Yeah. I think that's what we'll do then. Mm -hmm. we'll now the rules for coven little... magic yeah. is that essentially every one of you rolls and it's majority rules, so if you all have majority success, you all get plus one XP. If you all have medium, it's a medium outcome, and if you most of you fail, then I'm gonna have fun. Um, <laughs> remember, guys, we have a charm. Well, Sylvie doesn't, but the rest of us do. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a charm. No, so that's okay. You do have a charm for that uh, reroll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or actually, okay. yeah, plus ten. So, and the it's plus. Sorry, it's going to be plus our wisdom, which is great because that is also my core strength. Let me see. I think I have a plus two. Now this guy has zero. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I also have Is there anything the narratively you want to... Sorry. Ooh. Rin. Oh, I oh, was, he just, was just saying confirming... I also have plus zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, the heck is he was just hard lies. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, average... I mean... They have average wisdom. <laughs> is there anything narratively you want to contribute or you want to for the scene in the Bad Moon Rising. Uh, and for the record, we're not the only four witches in the coven. Like, we have other members, like Millery and Kai are in our coven as well, right? Like, from what are I Are they? I thought they were like, human. We have, um, they are human, but, you could, uh, but they were with me on our scouting trip, because their grandmother was definitely a witch too and that's how like our families became friends but it, i guess it depends on how okay, you would define okay. a coven yeah. but i'm i'm going to yeah. go with just the four of you because there's only so many okay. npcs i want to mm -hmm. uh, include in the discussion yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and we're already sure. quite npc heavy yeah uh narratively we could probably I imagine that there are runes that we could um, paint in a way, maybe not with paint, but 
With blood. Well, I was about to say something. Blood. Yeah, I was about. To, I was. I wasn't gonna say blood. I was about to say something much more gross. But you know what? Satan is used to this. Um, I was like, we can put our fluids on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I'm used mm. to you and fluids. <laughs> Christ. Like, Nati, you, you, got any, you got any saved up fluids that we could use, Anati? <laughs> uh, you're you're the premier the expert. <laughs> uh, considering I rolled snake eyes, I'm gonna go ahead. And oh no! Trying to roll again. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and not not take those two ones. Mm. Mother. Oh, yeah. So what are we looking at, friends? I'm looking very good. I rolled a 6 and a 4, so that's a 10 plus 2 is a 12. I also mm -hmm. rolled doubles, but not snake eyes. I have two fives for a 10. I rolled a 9. 7 and 9 is medium, yeah. And G? Mm -hmm. I uh, <clears throat> rolled a 2 and a 3, minus 1, so 4. <laughs> It's an improvement, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm majority rule. happy to we say. Had two. We had two. Yeah. I'm happy to say that the majority rules decide you are still winning. Um, and you're in the lower half of the full success. So the spell will go off without a hitch. The only slight caveat, which is not going to be too dramatic, um, is that to any witch worth her metal, it, it's quite obvious that the place was warded. Mm. Not I a bad like thing necessarily. Yeah. yeah. So when Madeline comes in the next morning, bright and early, well put together, with, oh. uh... Oh. Yes? Okay. I was gonna say that Sylvie had some stuff to do that evening. So, it's uh, like, we, it's you okay. closed after the wake. You can, you you have maybe an hour before she's coming over. You closed oh, after the wake and you okay, had a lockdown. So, so basically you were getting wasted till we like 5am in the morning. Yeah. Um, I mean, I Okay, this could still be something. Um, Sylvie was not planning on being present. Alright. Sylvie... Tell the class why? <laughs> no, Sylvie was planning on going out to the desert and have a conversation with the phoenix. <laughs> like, like, Sylvie's in a hurry. <laughs> like, uh, that was part of the conversation that she kind of wanted to have, was that having half the coven distract Madeline with a new contract while the other half goes um, and instead of asking for permission we'll ask for forgiveness from the seven um, <laughs> to talk to their contact in the desert to uh, see what they can do but if that's something that the GM wants to wait on then I'm not opposed to that either like I'm the I'm I'm very happy for you to ignore the seven. <laughs> Nanishka will suggest that it might be better that we're all there because then Madeline will definitely be like, "Hey, something's extra up." I mean, she already knows something's up, but uh, okay, yeah. That is, uh, I'm, I'm a paranoid player. Entirely up to you <laughs> for it. Like this is this is not something yeah, that has anything to do with the set. seven. Yeah. Madeline yeah, it'll didn't be something that request Sylvie, Sylvie to be is, there. Yeah, Sylvie is going to bring it up to because she's not. Sylvie's used to making decisions by herself, but that's not where she's at right now. Like this is definitely a coven decision because it affects all of us. And uh, Sylvie is going to be like, do we go and put our plan into my plan into motion while we distract Madeline? 
Or do we do it after she leaves? Like, this is a question she will ask all of you. It might be better after she leaves. I think I we should... Know. Go ahead. I should at least read what she brings us and go from there. I don't trust these people, and that's an understatement. Uh, I'm gonna call Cass and Pano, see if they can keep an eye out around the perimeter of the town. Because if there's not enough time for her to like go through the town, she's just gonna call them on the mm -hmm. phone. So she's gonna like boop, 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 and yeah. just dial. You should inform Cass them if, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nass and for Pino and Cass, if anything goes wrong, they should bring people to the bar, as it is protected from disaster. Through the back, of course. The parking lot was included. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's part of the property. Uh, uh, okay, she'll call Cass up first. And explain the situation overall, like, kind of like, we're gonna be dealing with Madeline and Illuminati. If anything bad happens, like keep an eye out on the perimeter of the town with Paino. And if anything bad happens, bring people to the bar. I will set out to patrol right now. Well, yeah, fine. I'll get the umbrella. It is early morning and the sun is just rising. <laughs> I you owe, owe you. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Peno is his usual grumpy self. Yeah. Alright, is it Nanechka calling him or... <laughs> well, if you ask me that nicely. Sylvie would really um, love it if you did, though. <sighs> I'll do it with a ribbon on top. Amazing. Don't tell her I said that. Oh, I already did. <laughs> <laughs> He's just gonna, I, like, I, stare I, at you as you're over the phone, like, confused because she didn't say that. <laughs> like, why are you saying that, Nausicaa? It's like, like, oh no, you're on I, speakerphone. I, yeah. <laughs> I you're on speakerphone. Like, Go ahead. If, if there's any amount of hesitation that a Nazi senses through the conversation, the part she can hear, she just yells, All right now, get your ass down here! <laughs> You're not even doing anything. You're just gonna be fucking hey. sleeping. Get off your ass. <laughs> it's just a. Uh... Um, are you wanting them inside the bar or just patrolling? Uh, basically? just to patrol the the perimeters of the town. Not go too far right. off. Just basically the the edges of it. All right. Then we'll move on to beautiful day with Madeline appearing and all four of you are there is that correct or did yes but I have showered and changed fair I feel like there's a shower Madeline... at the bar <laughs> that bar has so much stuff in the basement it's just the hose really oh, a basement in the oh a... Wait, hold on a basement in the desert that's rough like there's know. a lot there's a lot of limestone to go through <laughs> I sorry, don't know, sorry, man. Sorry. We listen, don't have desert. I know. Listen, my thing, like, that's a lot of rock. <laughs> like, anyway. We made ahead. it happen. We're witches. We have a basement. It's fine. That is true. We <laughs> made it happen. It's magic. We don't have to explain shit. Exactly. And you've had to argue with an Aji to not turn it into a sex dungeon. <laughs> well, we gave her her own room. So whatever happens in that room is her business. Yeah, soundproof. <laughs> anyway. It was soundproof. Mm. We are trying to this, Madeline. I'm trying to turn this into drama, but it's failing. Okay. Um, who appears in her best Ally McBeal outfit? A little bit too early for that, but you know what I mean. And it's this really icy kind of politeness from her side. She nods at all of you individually. Sylvie. Nanishka. 
Marcus. Anati, nice to meet you. And walks really into the bar. <laughs> I'm not going to. But that's what my instinct told me to do. <laughs> Sorry. All good. She has... She immediately takes over one of the tables and starts putting a lot of individual files and paperwork out. Sits down as if she owns the place. Looks around, looks at the runes, smiles, and says, Please, let's talk. Nashka will sit down. So will Anati. Nashka, why don't you instead go pour her a breakfast stout? Because She'll Sylvie look knows Nanat. Sylvie knows Nanashka's abilities. No, I know, but I, she... um, she gets it. But she'll look at you. We'll look at uh, Madeline. Won't even ask her and get up and then just uh, get a breakfast out for her. No, thank you. I'd like to keep a clean, a clear mind. You missed the wake in the funeral. It's for Afa. It's not poison or anything, unfortunately. It's just Murphy's. It's just Murphy. No, alcohol is a poison. We are here to discuss the future of Sears Rest. I don't see why we should talk around this particular issue. Right. Did you draw up a contract that I can have my lawyers look over? Yes. I did. Cool. And she hands you a, f a contract. In so many words, it will be something I'm sure your immediate reaction would be to disagree on. Mm -hmm. You see, at this point, with truce gone, mm -hmm. my boss is pondering his next moves. Financially, he could buy this town in a heartbeat. But he is of a more feral nature. And he prefers a more direct Violent victory. Approach. Well, if you give him a reason, yes. Throughout the last years, we have collected information. And I'm afraid to say that the people you harbour here are criminals. I tried to tell you before, Sylvie, you were unwilling yep. to listen, but... Criminals, by your definition, we tend to have a different... Criminals by the law's definition, Sylvie. Do you even know how many well. families are out there still grieving? Still not knowing what happened to their loved ones found dead in a ditch, clawed beyond recognition, or right. stolen away by a fairy or a spirit, or... Since when do human laws concern those of the immortal? That's a slippery slope Maddie, you're on. What are you doing? <laughs> T, what are you doing? I don't even have snap cam open. I'm moving my really? preview screen. <laughs> no, back, back to the series. <laughs> I know you have done good work. I know you have rehabilitated many. I've seen Aphra's work while I was still here. When I was growing up, and when I agreed with her approach, I don't think that approach is still valid in this day and age. I, I honestly think she lost the plot at some point. You have so little faith And I think if... Her. I'm impressed you have faith in her. 
Why would I not? She... Her approach got your mother killed. And my okay. parents. Both of them. Her protecting of these not-so-innocent souls was more important than her own blood. And her own family, her own children. I would like to make a roll on that. <sighs> what would you like to roll for? Um... I definitely want to do an awareness roll just because f for Sylvie, this is the first that she's kind of heard that her grandmother is responsible for her mother's death because, or yeah, like that doesn't sit right with her yeah. um, kind of thing. So I get a plus two to my whiz, which is an 11. You are taken Six. aback by the seriousness mm -hmm. and the firm belief in Madeline's voice. You knew that the incident has many versions, that this mm -hmm. escalation between the Illuminati and the Coven the first time around, depending on who you ask, has many different people to blame. You know that, yes, mm -hmm. your mother, your... Madeline's parents were victims of that escalation, although you never got a really straight answer out of Ava as to what happened. Mm -hmm. And certainly not of your father. But this is the first time anyone's accused Ava directly. I'm gonna breathe in deeply through my nose and just fold my hands into my lap. I believe that you believe that. I do not believe it. And that is your prerogative. And if you believe that, if you believe me and that, then Believe me when I say that I try to do what's best for all of us. You can continue your work. In fact, with this new contract, we can bring back cooperation. We can bring back the original spirit of the truce but with clear lines, with clear responsibilities, financial support from our side. You don't need your money. You will. The world is changing. Yeah. But there is propose? a give and take. Obviously. You open up Seer's Rest to us. You protect your people. You can take in new lost spirits. But we want to know who they are and what they have done. And if we deem them too dangerous, too, too impossible to be rehabilitated, then... And who they is will not the we? Be. I would be the representative of the Illuminati interest. So we as in I the Illuminati. Like... Go ahead, Anati. I I feel like there's gotta be more push and pull than just y'all decide that someone's too dangerous so you get to scoop them up. That's... <laughs> I mean, honestly, Madeline, that's that's a little ridiculous, don't you think? We should at least have a conversation, a probational period, some type of 
if you're actually here to propose a contract, and trust me when I say I'm fairly certain I'm the only one of the four of us who think that you might be here to try and garner some type of goodwill. There has to be a, a system in place. It, it, it can't just be you decide that they're bad so you get to take them with you. There will be a system in place, yes. A system of appeals, a council, and stated it's made up of both members. The details are all in there. We will have our lawyers look over this contract and have make any amendments that we wish and stay in contact with you. We're not lawyers after all. We're not going to read and sign anything without legal representation. Can I, I have a divination, a mother divination spell mm -hmm. that I, that says that I can reveal what the subject cares about and loves the most, thus identifying how they are vulnerable. Could I use that spell on the contract to try and determine whether or not one side is valued? in this contract and if there are any loopholes that like intentional wording like vulnerabilities through the contract it's stretching it a little bit i realize i totally understand that it's that is stretching a it pretty fucking hard to be perfectly honest because i mean it's, it's kind subject. of the whole point that witchcraft isn't lawyerism and to you know you can't just magic mm -hmm. yourself into I know Kung Fu. I understand <laughs> that, but Ajay Magic in particular mm -hmm. deals with organizations and infrastructures. Fair. Mm. Roll? Maybe they have lawyered magic a little bit. <laughs> Roll for it. Okay. Right. After I see okay. the result of this, I have to pee. <laughs> I'll roll as slowly as possible. <laughs> Jet, um. <laughs> okay. That is... Plus wisdom is an 8. Okay. Medium success. <laughs> the... I'll put it, I'll flavor it that way. Everything within you, every energy you thrive on, the creation that flows through your veins, the willingness and commitment to life itself is screaming and ringing every alarm bell that you have. In particular, you are being, your attention is being drawn to a page, to a word. The page itself doesn't seem to make much sense. You have to read it five times to even get a general sense of it, but there is this one word that you are being made aware of by your own inert magic. Um, it's, it says retroactively. All of the stipulations of handing over criminals. There's that one word, retroactively. I'll sort of because a Nazi would have came to the table with at least a pen and some scrap paper. And an Anadi's honestly just taking notes as as she's flipping through the contract, just like circling words that she's seeing and trying to draw up a whole paper of like, okay, so what about this? Okay, so what about this? Okay, so what about this? And just anything that catches that. <laughs> and she will sort of 
exhale a little bit and very dramatically circle the word retroactively four or five times and write it in large letters at the bottom of the paper and just look at Madeline. Retroactively, huh? Naturally. <clears throat> Madeline, you know we're not going to agree to this contract. Call me an optimist. You know our town has not done anything to breach the truth. That our people here have not done anyone any harm since they came here. Since they came here? Yes, yes they, like you said, rehabilitated. I would also say that considering your side is in fact the ones who breached the contract by means of your magic manipulating our barkeep that the onus of trust should be on you all and therefore when people come here they should be given the benefit of the doubt until they prove that they cannot meet the real rehabilitation standards worth exploring you and your company are just going to look at everything in a biased light. I can tell you one thing. She moves one of the folios over to mainly Anati. On the folio is the name. Prudence Wilson. Flip it open. And it is a detailed report of a factory company building in Ohio that through some strange reason got destroyed. There's newspaper articles and then more reports zoning in on various reasons, looking for one individual named Prudence Wilson that was once employed in that particular place and is now nowhere to be found, followed by more reports, traces of that individual in New Mexico in Sears Rest, and more reports on her abilities, her new identity, and her new coven. Retroactively, Madeline says, they'll want you. They'll negotiate everything else. But for some reason, they want you. <clears throat> um, <sighs> Madeline. I'm sorry for your loss. I don't know if anyone's 
told you that yet. But, uh, I unfortunately am a rehabilitator as much as I'm one of the rehabilitated. So, we're going to have to renegotiate this contract. You're muted. I have done what I can to keep him away, to use what you sneer upon, legalese, money, all those weapons of the Illuminati that you find disgusting. Try to use all of that to keep the peace. You're on your own. Madeline. Do you really care so much about this working out? I care about a clear conscience. I'm asking you a question and I expect a straight answer. It is a yes or no. You said you cared about your family. Do you really? You know, it really shouldn't take this long for a normal, sensible person to give that answer. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. it. It would just be a yes if you really cared about your family or the well-being of them. Or just be genuine about what you intended here. And the fact that you were manipulating somebody to bend the truce in your favor tells us that you didn't come here with good intentions as you try to claim on your pedestal. So don't lecture us about what we are failing to do because you came here with a dagger in your back. And don't lecture us about people who kill others when your own system is made out of murderers and thieves. It was very nice talking to you. Let's have coffee sometime. And she starts packing Before up. Leaves, I want to give her a small brown envelope uh, that's filled with like 30 or so tiny little things that you can't really see through the envelope properly. And I want to put them on top of whatever files she's putting away. And I will say, these fl these flowers were Afa's favorite. If you take the time to plant them, and water them, and care for them, you'll have something left to your grandmother. I would like to Thank roll you. to befriend, if I could. Ooh. Interesting move. Do it. Alright. Plus mercy, which is my current aspect. 
That is a two sixes, so 14. All right, you tell me what happens. I just want, I want her to brush it off like she's brushed off most of the, hey, sorry for your loss. But when she goes home tonight, I want there to just be just a pang of just something, whether it's guilt or a feeling of something missing. And I want her to buy a pot and some soil, find a window and plant the seeds. And then whatever she does from there is whatever she does from there. Madeline takes the envelope, gives you a thank you, non-committal. She does leave your file that you only managed to glance over here, because she is Madeline, and she does not owe people anything if she can help it. It is a full success roll, and there is always positive consequences, unintended positive consequences from this. So in addition to her actually buying that pot, there might be something coming up in the finale that will be helpful. That being said, there's also unintended consequences to failed rolls. And if you remember, we had a failed roll earlier today. When the Fae left this town. The Fae that were asked to protect Seer's Rest. And specifically, a young man. A mechanic. That we heard in the second, in the first episode, was uh, under a bad star, his clock ticking towards the blood moon. So, when Pino and Cass come running into the bad moon rising, as Madeline's left, and you see the shock and the horror on their faces. You know something's happened. They've taken them. Stella's gone. Jake's gone. I think I couldn't find Millery either. The old couple from... from the post office. What do you mean take I don't them? know where they went. I just... I can't find them. I can't find them. They've taken half the town. And on that, we're going to end today. Mother... She was God distracting us. Damn it. That other God person. You it. gave her a plant. Uh, <laughs> Two people can so play the chances. Uh, not uh -huh. you gave her a so peace offering. Chances. She lied to us. Hey, Anadi, are you, are you uh, getting angry? Are you getting angry? Uh, Did, didn't you want to get angry at some point? You, you know what? You know. Good point. Good point. Because now Nadi's going to be pissed. Now she's mad. Motherfucker. God, Sylvie, your cousin is the worst. Your cousin she's is the, the worst. fucking worst. Every time we give her a chance, she's like, nah, man, I'm not. And we're like, fuck it. Uh, she's like, like, like nah, thanks, though. 
I would like Mm-mm. to say something to the audience. Two things. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The worst people are the ones that who, th- who think they're never doing anything bad. And also, mm-hmm. a clear conscience is always clear when you don't look at the stains. Yup. Yeah. This bitch is gonna be fucking fucked up. I'm sorry. And like, y'all, it doesn't to take that long to answer a question if you care about your family. <laughs> And you know what was going through through my mind? My it's like the whole thing. She was she, the the one thing she was thinking during that question is what has my fucking family ever done for me? Why should I even care about that? Because in her mind, that's true. Like in her mind, mm-hmm. Sylvie was only treating her with contempt the whole time. Was only bitching at her the whole time. And in in her mind the one or two times she tried to be nice it was thrown back at her and why the fuck would i even care what am i even actually doing here that's a good question marcus why am i here fuck you guys and just you know because that's the thing when you have people who are so self-righteous and so convinced of themselves when you actually challenge them and you actually when it's actually getting tricky for them they'll resort to what they know and that's well, I'm always right, so... Well, we about to resort to what we know! <laughs> so, let's... Necromancy! Let's <laughs> yes, and necromancy. Is it really ne- Like, is it really necromancy? It's a phoenix. Like, it's a, it's a phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. I think a phoenix is just capable of necromancy. Think... Not, it's not be necromancy honest. because it's a phoenix. To be honest. Yeah. I don't even just, think yeah. that bringing the truth back is going to do anything. No, it's clearly they not going to They broke it once, they broke it again. They already have our people. There's no reestablishing a truce with that. But the, th- the thing is, though... I think that whole plan went out the window. Mm-hmm. The thing is, though, you got to remember it's not just us and the Illuminati. It's also the werewolves. And if the mm-hmm. werewolves see that the Illuminati, they can't openly violate, they got to do it in sneaky ways, because if they openly violate the truth like that, then the werewolves are going to be like, okay, well, how long until we're on that end of the stick? And then we can link up with the werewolves. So if we can set another treaty, they're not going to like, like roll tanks into Seer's rest, because that would, that would cause a way bigger problem than Seer's rest. Because then the werewolves would be like, mm, hold on, motherfucker. How did they so, take people, though? You might want to uh, wonder. The fame, no, probably. If you, if you remember, many... <laughs> yeah, you do. The Many of the werewolves are working for the Illuminati. On their yeah, Alistair. they're already on their side, so they probably abducted oh, them. Oh, right, because Alistair. That's right. I forgot about that fucking bastard. Great. It, we well, tried to we tried right. to deviate that a little bit with the fake bones, but it didn't really seem to do much. The fake bones were well. brilliant because it, without them, like if they'd figured that, and that was my original plan. With if you hadn't succeeded in in solving that conflict around the werewolf skull. The werewolves would have attacked outright because you keep this item that is so important to them from them. Alistair would have riled them up. Mm-hmm. This way, they 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 are still not having the upper hand. They're still not. They're still having to kind of play with little blackmail bits and bobs <laughs> and legalese to try and right. and keep this in the clean because they realize so they've slipped up. So what you're saying is by succeeding. None of us are getting our 14 werewolves. Correct, yes. <laughs> Darn. Oh, Is that God. really a victory? I just, I just, I just want my vampire. <laughs> I want to spoil her I mean, so hard. I want to spoil her so hard. <laughs> Next so, session, we got our 14 I'm, vampire I'm, werewolves. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna tease oh, God, a little. Me too. Go ahead. No, don't, oh God. What do you think they're going to do with all the people they've taken? Mm, turn them. Bye. Turn them into werewolves. Anyway. In public. This yeah. is, this is, this is where we're going to end. I don't, I don't 100% know what well, we're going to do gonna next, if not any other than cry. But 
We are going to talk about that and see what what everyone's plans are. Um, can you, can you, can you, can you? Where are we? Fifty two. Yeah. Um, hmm. Can you all give me a prediction of what's going to happen, or a scene that's going to happen, or or how this is going to end? And then give us where we can find you, starting with Alessa. Today. Oh no, I'm first. Oh god. Yes, yes, uh... you're first. Someone has to. Be. <laughs> Shit. Uh, honestly, I I think that the only upper hand we got was the successful befriend roll. Because. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to think that while this may go into a little bit of a rant, so I'm going to try to keep it precise, but that while she has all this self-righteousness, I think Anati's kindness showed her, well, we kind of all treated her with contempt. And for good reason. I'm not going to apologize for that. Um, I think that showed her a bit of what we're actually doing because they take people, they judge them with no right and kill them, basically. Instead of doing what it is this town is trying to do, which is try to help people. And I think she's going to understand that tonight when she decides to grow these flowers. So I think she's going to come into play at some point in the finale, of course. And I think it's going to be mostly us against werewolves and uh, Alistair. And I'm scared. <laughs> uh, I I am a little scared. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I think she's going to actually see something from our point of view and try to make some things right. I don't think she's going to get all the way but maybe giving us some sort of information. I don't think she's gonna throw herself into the heat of battle, but give us some sort of information. Uh, that's me. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Vamp, or sometimes known as Satan, as Scribbles found out last week uh, on the internet. <laughs> um, you can find me here uh, next week on Monday for the finale episode of this game, in which... I'm just gonna say I love this game with all my heart and I love the people that I get to play with and Lydia as the guide. This has been one of the most fantastic games I've played. Um, but you can also find me on other fantastic games. On Thursdays, you can find me at Indoor Adventurers playing Masks, um, where I play uh, the Reformed, a, a villain who's no longer a villain and trying to be a hero. Uh, you know, it, it, it's appropriate with, with this game a little bit. Um, you can also find me there on Sunday nights playing Rama the Frost Maiden. On Saturdays, you can find me over at Battle Dragon's channel playing Dragon Age. And then right after that, over at Plot Hunters playing D&D. Uh, &D. And then Sunday mornings, you can find me over at the Hype Goblin where I DM my own set of friends uh, through my homebrew world. Uh, it is based on D&D, but we are pretty uh, loosey-goosey with the rules. I mostly rule of cool it. I like a more creative game. Uh, but that's me. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. I'm sure every... The good news is nobody in this game dies without the player's consent. The bad news is... You're all gluttons for punishment, so we're gonna figure it out as we go along. That is a lie. I don't Speaking I'm gonna that. cry. <laughs> I know you all well enough that if you were like, ooh, this would make so much sense, ooh, this is such a dramatic impact, you'd be going for it. I know. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it might just get a happy ending. Uh, we might just have a bunch of new werewolves with a couple of really good befriend moves. Who knows? I don't know. We'll figure it out together. Marcus, Rin, what's your prediction other than 14 werewolves and where can we find you? Uh, I mean, if I have to discount the 14 werewolves, I think Marcus is going to at least end up with one werewolf boyfriend before this is over. And uh, he's not going to be disappointed with that. 
Um, so um, you can find me uh, over on my own channel, Party Wipe Games. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we do Vampire the Masquerade. Um, there's a few other pickup games and other places where I'll be uh, throughout the week as well. Uh, I think I can jump the gun on Val and announce that I'm going to be in yeah. a Forged in the Dark game. <laughs> yeah, for that. Yeah, um, you can say it. It's fine. Yeah, I don't yeah. I got, I got <laughs> scooped up to, to join uh, Val on Thursdays uh, to play some, some Forge, so I'm excited for that. Um, Friday, we have the conclusion of the Penny for a Tales Call of Cthulhu game, where my professor uh, was the first person to go completely insane um, in a series of rolls, I rolled seven, oh, phone, seven consecutive 99s, uh, where the scale of 100 uh, is bad. And so I had seven 99s throughout the entire game out of like 12 rolls. And that was a downward spiral of tripping and falling on a shotgun that he had then seeing the Eldritch monster that made him go into one insanity roll that failed into the second one. So he went hysterically insane and then was immediately out of the game by being institutionalized, which just is like your character is done hand in the sheet. And so he was just gone. Uh, so that was that was fun last week. So I get to pick up a new character uh, for the finale. Uh, Saturdays, we play Descent into Avernus. Sunday, we have the conclusion of our uh, Things from the Flood game. Um, and Monday, coming soon, even though it gets pushed back, uh, immediately after this one, uh, we will be playing with uh, Diesel Shots uh, crew again for their Change Stars before the Kickstarter uh, for their game uh, comes out. If you haven't checked them out, check them out in their Change Stars uh, when it goes live soon. We've helped play test it and it's great. So that's me. <laughs> Amazing. And D, my dear, with that linchpin roll for the contract today, what's your prediction <laughs> for the future and where can we find you? Um, well, I think that I think that everything is going to work out just fine. And it might not work out fine in the way that everyone thinks fine will look, but it'll work out fine. Everything's going to be great. Who would end the TTRPG on a bad note? No. Hi, I'm D. I am a streamer, actor, musician. Yeah, probably. A uh, professional GM with the Emerald City Game Masters Guild and with Magpie in our curated play program. I love you, Lydia. Um, I also play Julian in Woodsy Studios Crimson Spires, a visual novel available on Steam if you want to revert, romance your own vampire version of myself. Um, on Mondays, uh, you can catch me here for Great American Witch and over on the Critical Misses channel, um, usually at around 8 p.m. EST, we're going to go live for Kingsguard. That is a Roll20 sponsored show. Tuesdays, you can catch me on my channel where I stream games of all make and variety. Wednesdays, you can catch me on Critical Misses where I am the storyteller or master of ceremonies for Under the Pale Cold Sun, a Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Chronicle. On Thursdays, you can catch me on my channel for the best esports team in all of professional gaming, the Dub Club. We have never lost a game, not a single time. There's no need to check the VOD because I just told you we never lose. On Fridays, you can catch me nowhere because we change when that show comes out. So on Fridays, I sleep. On Saturdays, I work more. And on Sundays, you can catch me on the Chaotic Pod channel for Hidden Magics, where I play Multion, a totally normal bard. And that's my whole schedule currently. There's like 15, there were like 15 half truth lies by omission in there, which, you know. Yes, that. So, Val, what is your prediction for this? Uh family um, business of yours. Well, I sent you a private one and we're going to keep it private <laughs> um, like in Discord. Um, but my other prediction is a face-off with, like a 1v1 with Madeline. Like that's kind, that's definitely my prediction at some point, just because I think it's building up to that. 
Um, I definitely, that's my prediction, but, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the big one. Cool. But hey, y'all, my name's Val, or Valdrianth, or Rosie Raid on the internet. You can find me on all my socials down there at Valdrianth, that's Twitch, Twitter, and on Discord, it's like Valdrianth8834. Um, I produce TTRPG streams for me and my friends, so you can come and check me out on my Twitch channel on Wednesdays. I take the Dungeon Master seat where I run some Dungeons and Dragons. Currently, I only have three episodes left of this season. On Wednesday night, uh, we have more D&D uh, with my friend Robbie Rowland in the seat with Revenge of the Gith. On Thursday evenings, my cute husband likes to run some... Um, some of the expanse over on my channel and listen i'm gonna just i'm just gonna tell y'all something i don't play in this game but i sit here and i run tech and i listen to them and yo my accent is out i can't stop it um i sit here and i listen and they are a fantastic group of players so like if you're gonna come to my channel to watch anything come watch on thursday evenings because this is some of the most emotional emotions I have ever seen that I've never participated in this happened in this stream. Um, also because my husband is the best and you should come see him. Um, after myself, of course. But, and then on Friday, we have the finale of our uh, Lancer campaign, which you can see some familiar faces there. You'll have myself. Uh, we also have Pope, Wally, and Anna, Nymeria Streams, who are all participating in that, and that'll be the end of that series. Uh, and then on Saturdays, we have Dragon Age. And then, you can also find me back here on Friday evening as I come back to Defiant. And uh, I don't know how much to reveal, but all I can say is nobody should be surprised in my character. Defiant, it's always going to be horny. Does but... it involve fluid? <laughs> yeah. Um, it definitely involves Velociraptors. So okay. Way. Holy fuck. Like I okay. fi I'm finally living my dream. <laughs> ah, not gonna judge. Not gonna judge. A little bit. I'm Lydia. I'm the guide. I have uh I do I do I have a prediction? I mean I know bits and bobs, but I also know that with this crew they always go out the window eventually. Um there's definitely a couple of things we'll need to streamline in terms of keeping within the three hour finale thing, or else we'll be here forever. But my prediction is my prediction is that we actually get a happy ending. Like, they somehow come up with an idea and with a resolution that at least, at the very least, kicks the can down the road and at the best resolves the Illuminati bullshit with a clever blackmail threat or something I sure like want that, Lydia. I sure want that. I'm I am a big fan of happy endings. Everything you've done so far gives me the idea that that I can trust you to come up with something that I didn't consider because you are always coming up with shit I didn't consider and that makes me go, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? But um, <laughs> until then, you can find me um, mostly in behind the scenes here on Weave. Um, very much looking forward to the Black Void finale on a Wednesday. I'm also on Friday going to be over on Colonomicon's channel with uh, Puddins, with Alex from Chromatica Mera, who we're going to raid in just a minute as they're playing Quest. We were actually doing a dialect game there just yesterday with Megan, who was on the Quest game. And of course, we had oh, my lovely GM chat show with the. Uh, with Cream Nat with Nat for on for, for Cobalt Press ages ago. So we're gonna visit all these lovely faces and see what they're up to. Other than that, check out Colonomicon during May, PBT May as we're calling it, because we're playing PBTA games throughout the whole month. And I'm gonna be in Thirsty Sword Lesbians, gemmed by Wally, and I'm very much looking forward to that one. That I'm is so on the twenty something something. Twenty third at seven PM EST. Other than that, I'm taking it slightly slower these days, and at least I'm 
trying to because I might actually go back to normal, normal British summertime, and that's going to be interesting. But until then, you can find me as Half Hour's Hermit all over the place. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to our sponsors and everyone who is with us today. Are you trying to say something, Dee? Because you might be muted. Or were you some... Okay. Cool. No. Then we are going to sign off here. We are going to leave you with the trailer and then with the wonderful people of a Chromatic Chimera. Thank you very much, guys. And goodbye. See you for the finale next week. These are the tales we weave. Tales of magic. Tales of mystery. Tales exploring the beyond. And while we continue to grow, even more adventures await. In the depths of the unknown. Will you join us in the telling? <laughs>